true. They don't even believe the truth is knowable. They don't even believe that. And you can tell by the way that they live. You just look at them. They say they believe certain things, but they don't follow through with the appropriate behavior. It's just the truth. That's the truth. So when you're not anchored to the truth, and we know that the truth is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the belt of truth. Each individual piece of armor is representing the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's something that you need to understand. You need to understand this. And you need to put it on every day. Every single day. This is why this is so important. This is why I want you to memorize this passage of scripture. You need to have your loins girt about with truth. Because when that phone call comes and that doctor tells you you got cancer. If you don't got that, you can walk away from the faith. When your child gets into an accident, you're going to walk away from the faith. When your boss kicks you out of the job because you're passing out gospel tracts, you're going to walk away from the faith. You're not anchored to truth. You're not going to be a faithful witness. You're not going to open your mouth. You're going to be a yellow belly coward because you don't believe it. Most people are deceived. They say they believe, but they don't follow through with the appropriate behavior because if you really believe, Something is going to prove that you actually believe it. This is why this is so important. We have to have our loins girt about with this truth. It allows me. This is what has allowed me to be set completely free. This is what has set me free. This is what has set my family free. This is why my children live the victorious Christian life. They're living in complete victory. They're anchored to the truth. They're anchored to the truth. They can open up a Bible and tell you what they believe and why they believe it. They're not open. They're not going from church to church. They're not listening to some bumbling buffoon opening up another Bible that ain't even the King James Bible and a bunch of all this. Stuff. What are you doing? You don't understand truth. That's what your problem is. It's the truth. We need to understand these things. We have to have our loins girt. So nothing will distract you so that you can move forward in your children, in your grandchildren, in your neighbors, in your friends, in your co-workers can actually see, they see your faith lived out. Oh, this is so important. And then if you take a look at it in verse 13, he says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand. Now, I ask you to mark these. Stand in verse 11. Stand in verse 13. Two times. And then in verse 14, stand. That's four times. So here what God is telling us, in this world that is going wild, gone wild. In this world that says you can be a Christian as long as you live it like some yellow belly coward somewhere in your house and you're a closet Christian, it's okay, but you better not take it out to the community. You better not take it out to where you work. You better not take it out to the grocery store. You better not be taking it out to you when you're running errands. But I'm going to tell you something. Biblical Christianity is taking the Lord Jesus Christ with you everywhere we go. So we're living in a day and time where the world says, shut up and sit down. But God is saying, stand, 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 stand for truth in this battle for truth in these last of the last days. But the only way that we stand is if we put on the whole armor of God and that we understand what the armor of God is and what it is that we have in Christ. So then he goes on to say in verse 14, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. And now he says, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness. Well, what is the breastplate of righteousness? Well, look, the devil fought that he delivered the death blow to us. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, that's it. 
We were born in sin, and we inherited that sin nature from our Adamic parents. So he thought that he delivered us the death blow. So you think about this. This is powerful. And I've been praying that the Lord would open up your spiritual understanding. Brother Paul's there. Here comes a Roman soldier. He's checking on old Brother Paul. He's riding there underneath the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He looks and he sees that Roman soldier. And he says, I notice they've got a belt. We've got a belt. We've got the belt of truth. And it holds us together. It holds us together. It keeps everything together. We have a belt of truth. I can't keep my family together. I can't keep my home together. I can't keep my marriage together. But praise God, the Lord Jesus Christ can. And it's the truth. It's the, it's the belt of truth that is, that is girt about my loins. But I also notice he's got a breastplate. We have a breastplate. We've got a breastplate too. But what does our breastplate do? What does a breastplate protect that protects our vital organs? I mean, Adam can tell you, uh, Robert can tell you, they're military. They, they've seen things. They know. You can take a, a hit on your thigh, a hit on your shoulder. You may make it. But think about if you, if you take a hit in your torso, you've got the liver, you've got the kidneys, you've got your heart. Just one small puncture can prove to be fatal. So Brother Paul says, yes, I see. He's got that breastplate to protect his vital organs, to protect from a death blow. You can't go out into battle without your breastplate on. You're not going to live. He says, we've got a breastplate too. See, Satan thought that he delivered the death blow to us when Adam sinned in the garden. That's what he thought. We were all sentenced to death. What does Romans 3.10 says? It says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned, each and every one of us, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Each and every one of us. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. This is why we grow old. This is why there's cancer. This is why there's COVID. This is why there's AIDS. This is why there's child molesters. This is why there's bank robbers. This is why there's earthquakes. This is why there's natural disasters. This is why there's tsunamis. This is why there's thieves and rapists. We live in a sin-cursed world. We live in bondage. We die. Our physical bodies die. And the Bible clearly teaches about a second death. Where we are eternally separated from a thrice holy God in a place called hell with real fire. If there wasn't a real hell and a real fire, God wouldn't have, had to, wouldn't have had to send his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come to this world to be born of a virgin. He wouldn't have had to endure what he endured on the cross. He paid your hell and my hell on the cross. Why would he send his son to endure all of that if there wasn't a real hell? You've got to understand that. The devil thought he had us all in bondage, that he delivered the death blow. We're just waiting one by one to die off. And we're going to be separated from God in a place called hell. But God looks over the balcony of heaven and says, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Not too fast. Not too fast. I'm going to make a way. I'm going to reconcile man back to myself. We just read it. Hark the herald angels sing. He's going to make a way. He's going to bridge the gap. He's going to put our sins at variance. He, he looks over the balcony of heaven and he sees that sin debt. And he says, that sin debt must be paid and I'm going to pay it. And he sends the Lord Jesus Christ to come to this world, to be born of a virgin. He didn't have an earthly father because if he had an earthly father, he couldn't be a savior. He would be a sinner just like us. No. He didn't have an earthly father. He lived a sinless life, which is something none of us could ever do. And he went to the cross of Calvary where he died for us and as us. He paid our hell on that cross so that we wouldn't have to pay it. That's what happened on that cross. He shed his precious blood. He died for us and as us, and he was buried, and he rose victoriously from the grave, and he defeated our greatest enemy, 
which is death itself. He rose bodily from the grave. And he defeated our greatest enemy. And because of that, he can save us. So don't miss this. What is the breastplate of righteousness? We know that within ourselves, we have no righteousness within ourselves. Because we're sinners. We have no righteousness within ourselves. But the Lord Jesus Christ is our righteousness. When he died for us on the cross, his righteousness was imputed. It was given to us. We have nothing to do with salvation. It is a gift from God. Salvation is of God. His righteousness was imputed. It was given to us. It was imputed to us. This is why I don't need to walk around with guilt and shame and condemnation. Oh, no. Oh, this is powerful. When the Lord sees me, wherever I'm at, at the store, in my home, with my children in Tennessee, and if you're a child of God, wherever he sees you at work, at the store, visiting your mother, cleaning the yard, doing whatever it is that you're doing, when he sees you, it is as if he's looking at his own dear son. You've been washed in the precious blood of the Lamb. He died for you and as you. He paid your hell so you wouldn't have to pay it. See, Satan thought he delivered a death blow. But no, we have Christ's righteousness imputed to our account. That is the breastplate of righteousness. Turn with me, if you would, to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'd like you to see this. What an encouraging verse. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to take a look at verse 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. We're looking at the whole armor of God. We looked at the belt of truth. We know that we have our loins girt about with truth. It holds everything together so that we're free to live the victorious Christian life. Now we're looking at the breastplate of righteousness. We know that we have no righteousness within ourselves. We have no righteousness. We're sinners. We're born in sin and we choose to sin. But the Lord Jesus Christ is our righteousness. He imputed his righteousness to our account. Now take a look at verse 30. But of him are ye in Christ, Jesus. And notice this. Who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Think of it. Verse 31, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Christ has been made our all in all, but specifically, he's been made our righteousness. Christ has been made unto us righteousness. He has imputed his righteousness to our account. This is what we're talking about here today. And now, if you would turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're going to take a look at verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. This is so powerful. The Bible says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You see, we have no righteousness within ourselves. But the Lord Jesus Christ became sin for us who knew no sin. You see, his righteousness has been imputed to our account. And because of that, now we are made righteous. Everything that we need to live the victorious Christian life is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. We just read it in, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It said there that God has made into us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. You see, when we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the day that I put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ six and a half years ago, I was saved from the penalty of sin. The penalty of sin. One day I will be saved completely from the power of sin and the very presence of sin when I'm taken on up to glory. But the day I receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, I was set free from the penalty of sin. That's why I don't need to walk around with guilt and shame and condemnation. 
I don't need to do that. My sins were judged on the cross when the Lord Jesus Christ died for me and as me. My sins were judged past, present, and future. And because of that truth, I've been able to grow as a Christian. Because of that truth, I've been able to mature. Because of that truth, my sanctification process hasn't been stunted. That's what the Bible teaches. I can't lose my salvation. I can't lose it. I am eternally secure. God said it's eternal life. It is eternal. This is important to understand. That's why it's not talking about uh, our righteousness. It's, it's not talking about our sin. What it's talking about is us living righteously, not only before God, but amongst the people that we come in contact with. This is what it's talking about. It's talking about putting on the breastplate of righteousness on a daily basis so that we can live righteously amongst the people that we come in contact with so that when they see us, they can see our faith being lived out. This is important. We're talking about the whole armor of God. We looked at the, the belt of truth. The truth holds everything together. It's at the very center of our being. It's connected to every part of our life. It sets us free to live the victorious Christian life, not to be distracted with every uh, cookie the clown and bows of the clown that we come in contact with that says that they don't believe this, they don't believe that, they don't believe. If you're not anchored to the truth, you can't move. You, that's it. You're done. You're done. But we also have the breastplate of righteousness. We have the breastplate of righteousness, and we are commanded to put on that breastplate to live righteously amongst the people that we come in contact with so that we can have a strong testimony. And it is possible. It is possible. You can be somebody that has a strong Christian testimony. The Lord desires for you to be a Christian that has a strong Christian testimony. But that only happens when you put on the, the breastplate of righteousness every day. If you would, turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I want you to take a look at this. This is so powerful. Romans chapter 12. We're going to begin reading there in just, just a moment in verse 1. And I'm going to give you a moment to turn there. And I hope that you've been praying and that you're going to continue to pray that the Lord would help you through the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would be able to make these connections so that you can begin to live the life that God desires and designed for you to live. We're talking about the whole armor of God. We're talking about putting on the breastplate of righteousness so that we can live righteously, so that we can have a testimony amongst the people that we come in contact with. Nobody wants to pay attention to somebody that says that they're a Christian but lives no differently than the people of the world. The only way that we can do that is if we put on the breastplate of righteousness. We look to the Lord Jesus Christ to give us the strength that we need to live righteously with the people that we work with, with the children that we have in our home. When we go out into the community and we run our errands, that is only done when we put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, Brother Paul says here in Romans chapter 12, he says in verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, I beg you, this is what he's saying, I beg you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies, uh-oh, here we go, a living, a living Sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, your reasonable service. He says, look, you need to present your bodies a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Why is this your reasonable service? Why is this so important? Because the Lord Jesus Christ died for us and as us on the cross. We had the death sentence. We were destined and deserving to go to hell. But the Lord Jesus Christ died for us and as us on the cross. He paid my hell on the cross so I wouldn't have to pay it. He was slaughtered on that cross. They beat him into a bloody pulp. 
hope. He shed his precious blood for me. He, he endured the shame of the cross for me. He was buried for me. He rose victoriously from the grave for me. And because of that, Brother Paul says, we, our life should be a living sacrifice. Holy, we should be living righteously among the people that we come in contact with. Brother Paul, what is he saying? Galatians 2.20 he says, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Brother Paul says, it was me he died for on that cross. It was me he shed his precious blood for. And because of that, I'm crucified to this world. Until it's broken systems. My heart doesn't beat to the drum of the zombies that are walking around. You're surrounded with dead people. They're spiritually dead. Sure, they've got a colossal intellect. They roll out of bed and just invent something. They're right smack in the center of them. They're dead. Because they don't have a relationship with the true and living God. This is what Brother Paul is saying. Put on, put on the breastplate of righteousness. What is it? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's the breastplate. Take a look at it. We're going to look at this. Take a look at Romans chapter 13. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for, for, for doctrine. Take a look at it. 13. Romans chapter 13. We're going to begin reading in verse 11. The old four-star general, old brother Paul, old Saul of Tarsus, he writes, Romans chapter 13, verse 11, in that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. I hope you're not a sleepy Christian in here this evening. Because if, it, if you are, it's time to awake. It's time, it's high time, it's time to awake. You need to be wide awake spiritually. Listen to old brother Paul. And then knowing the time, then now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is, a, is our salvation nearer than when we believe, verse 12, the night is far spent. Uh-oh, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Now watch this. And let us put on the armor of light. What is this armor of light? What is this righteousness? Well, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Take a look at it in verse 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in rioting. Not in rioting. Not in drunkenness, not in drunkenness, not in chambering, not in wantonness, not in strife, not in envying. And I wish I had time to describe what this is, but the best way that I can describe it is some old stinky old harlot of a woman or some old sorry drunkard of a man that's stumbling in like some back alley possum at six o'clock in the morning with a bag of coke in his pocket. Or, or some harlot that has done, done did the walk of shame with 50 different people all over this island. Every time they draw across, she's doing that walk of shame on the people. Just walking inside her house, smelling like cigarettes and alcohol and with her, ass, with her lashes out to here and everything else. And just full of the devil, smelling like cigarettes and like liquor and everything else. And she just plops down on that old stinking bed with her head pounding and pounding and pounding with guilt and shame because she just gave herself again to somebody that just told her whatever it is that she wanted to hear or some sorry old man that did the same thing smelling like alcohol you can smell him from, from the back door just stinking just stinking like sin that's what that's a picture of we're not supposed to act and behave like that as a child of God not in wantonness, not in strife not in envy Verse 14, here we go. Oh, I like this. But put ye on the what? The Lord Jesus Christ. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh. This is why some of you all ain't going to go too far in the Christian life. Because you make provision for the, for the flesh. 
Some of you got a bottle of liquor somewhere in your house, and you know you're not supposed to be lit, uh, drinking liquor. I've never met any serious Christian ever in my life that's a soul and the shock full of the Holy Ghost that drinks liquor. Yeah. You're making provision for the flesh if you got that there and you're saying, well, you know what? I'm going to have me a, a, a glass on, on New Year's or Christmas or whatever. You as blind as a bat backing up backwards. You're making provision for the flesh. That's it. You in bondage. Uh, I'm going to quit smoking cigarettes, but you've got the vape and you've got the pipe underneath the, the, your car seat or, or somewhere in a shed back where in your yard somewhere. Uh, you got the pornographic movies tucked in your attic or you got them in your gym bag. Covered up with more towels and everything else that you can't even imagine. And it, it, but you're making provision for the flesh. That's why you're not happy with your wife. That's why women ain't happy with their husband. They're watching more pornography. They can't understand nothing. They, 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 they're living in some fantasy world. They're looking at people that don't even exist. The devil's got them lulled to sleep, handcuffed, gagged, and bound. They're making provision for the flesh. you got to understand that. You can't make provision for the flesh and live the victorious Christian life. You can't make provision for the flesh and live righteously amongst the people that you come in contact with. I'm talking to you about living the victorious Christian life. I'm talking to you about putting on the whole armor of God. I'm talking to you about putting on the blessed, the breastplate of righteousness, which is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So you say, what's the message? The breastplate of righteousness is about daily living in obedience to God. That's what it's about. It's about us living according to the principles and the patterns of the Bible on a daily basis in our home with our children, at our job site with our coworkers, when we go to visit our family members. That's what it's about. It's about living a life of obedience. It's about looking to the Lord Jesus Christ to give us the strength that we need. We cannot... We cannot live righteously amongst the people that we come in contact with on our own strength. We have to look to the Lord Jesus Christ for him to give us the strength to grapple and battle with the sin and the temptations that we grapple and battle with on a daily basis. That is only possible when we put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Can, you can put it on if you're a child of God. And if you're not a child of God, today can be the day of your glorious salvation. Amen. What you need to understand is, is that you're a sinner. You were born in sin and your sins have separated you from a holy God. The wrath of God is upon you right now. You need to repent of your sin, of making up a God that suits you in your own image. You need to turn away from that celestial Santa Claus, that divine butler in the sky that you've just made up. And you need to put your trust in Christ and in Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins. And at that moment, God will indwell you with the Holy Spirit, which is the person of Jesus Christ himself indwelling you. And now and only now, can you be in a position to put on these pieces of armor and live the victorious Christian life that the Lord desires and designed each one of his children to live in? It is not God's will for you to be a cookie the clown or bozo the clown Christian. It's not his desire. He wants you to be a difference maker. That's what he wants. He wants you to be a difference maker. He doesn't, he doesn't want you to be, well, here we go. We're going to play the grand prize game again. Here, let's bring Cookie out here. Let's see if we can get it in the sixth bucket and see who wins the, the, final, the, final, uh, the, final, the final game. He doesn't want that. He wants you to be somebody that is shocked full of the Holy Ghost that when you open up your mouth, the people that are around you actually pay attention and listen. That only happens when we put on the whole armor of God. And we're determined here to live the victorious Christian life. And I want you to know that the Lord has brought you here because he has a marvelous plan and a purpose for your life. You are highly, highly, highly,
highly favored. Highly favored. I mean, it's just the truth. Each and every person that is in here today, it's just a miracle. God has something for you guys that is just beyond description. And I want you to begin to see these things. If you're not saved, you need to get this settled here and now. Stop moving around. Stop wasting your time. You have this pivotal moment of time. This is your time right now. You're somewhere in between the tombstone, in between the line on the tombstone. You're not promised tomorrow. Humble yourself and put your faith in Christ. And follow through with what the Lord has commanded you to do. So that you can begin to be the difference maker that the Lord desires for you to be. In your home, in your family, with the people that you come in contact with. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Please pray for me throughout the week. I pray for each and every person that is in here by name. And I love each and every person that is in here. And every time I see you all, I am excited. And I know that I step on your toes. And I know that sometimes it's difficult. But I do it because I love you. Yes. And when people love you, they tell you the truth. Yes. They tell you the truth. And you know what the truth does? It sets you free. That's what it does. So please pray for me. And uh, we're praying for you guys. And I want you to be excited. Because the best is yet to come. I promise you. I'm looking forward. I can't wait for this next year. The best is yet to come. Yeah. So let's just join together. Let's get on board and let's get after this thing. Yeah. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that your word transforms our lives, Lord. We thank you for the promises. We thank you that it is possible to live the victorious Christian life, Lord. We thank you for your son and what it is that he accomplished on the cross for our sins. I thank you, Lord, that we don't need to walk around with guilt and shame and condemnation. We have been washed by the precious blood of the Lamb. I thank you, Lord.